and we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. This time we're looking at who are you? Description, let me in, let me in. And then we're given a link and we have a hint. It ain't much, but it's an RFC. RFC stands for request for comments. And it's a way that bodies like the uh, IETF, which I think is International Internet, I don't know, Task Force, something like that. It's how they establish standards is they put out documents and then they request comments on them and then they revise them based on uh, feedback that they get on them. So let's open this. And it says, only people who use the official Pico browser are allowed on the site. Wait a minute, who are you? And let's take a look at what we have here in terms of source. Uh, we've got a bunch of third-party stuff coming in. We've got that message we saw. We've got the GIF. And we have a script that doesn't seem to do much. And then when we look at the source, we've got the GIF. We have the index we just looked at. So we don't have much. So let's open this up in Burp Suite and let's set a proxy in between us so we can see everything that's going across the wire. And while that's starting up, I also want to open up the hint. To show you the RFC and this is really, this is uh, kind of formalizing everything that is HTTP and the web. So you can see different sections here. Uh, we've talked about some of this before. The different codes you get, so 200s for successful, the different kinds of methods, etc. So this is laying out everything that HTTP is, and then you can read the details. So these are the docs detailing uh, the expected behavior of things. All right, so let's go back to Burp Suite though, and let's start up our proxy. And here we can see what we're sending across. I'm going to allow it to proceed. And we can see we have four requests. And these don't really matter. These are for third-party libraries and an icon. This is one we care about. And we can see we get the same error. Only people who use the official Pico browser are allowed on the site. And when we look at what we sent across, we can see we sent Mozilla 5.0. And we call it user agent. So what this is, is this is a header. And you can think of HTTP headers as metadata around what you're sending. So it's like special handling instructions on the outside of an envelope if you were sending something through the post office. So the user agent is specifically saying what exactly your purpose is. Who are you? Are you a browser? Are you Google web crawling to create their index? Any number of things. What browser are you using specifically? Because different browsers behave differently. So let's try changing that and see what happens. Let's put in Pico browser and let's send that and open this up a little wider. And we can see the message changed. I don't trust users visiting from another site. Okay, so header seems to be the way that we'll make progress on this task. But this is not a lot of fun reading this HTTP code in, in just text. So what I did was I installed another Chrome plugin and it's this mod header and we'll take a look at this quickly on uh, the Chrome Web Store. Uh, that wasn't it. Let's try again. How do I view this on the Web Store? Permission site access. Ah, there we go. So Chrome Web Store mod header by these guys be wise. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to change the headers by just going here and adding a new request header. I'll add a few of them because we're going to need quite a few, you'll see. And then it gives us a list of all the available headers. So first you have to do the key. So the key is user agent. And then Pico browser is the browser we want. And we can see we have the first message, only people who use Pico browser are allowed. Now we're going to refresh because we're sending across that new header. And now he says, I don't trust users visiting from another site. We're going to do one more thing. This key got so annoying as I started going through this. So I'd like to introduce user scripts and Tamper Monkey just to show you a way to really change a website in any way that you'd like. So I'm using the dev tools. I am going to copy a JSON path, uh, a JavaScript path, excuse me. And we're going to see what that looks like in the console. So document, that refers to the entire document we're looking at. And then we want to do a query and we want to get that image. So you can see that gives us the GIF right there. Now we want to remove that from the page. 
because the kid is, is honestly driving me nuts. All right, cool, but that's not gonna persist if we refresh the page, so the kid will come back. So what we wanna do is we wanna prevent that. So we'll go and we'll install another Chrome extension. This is Tamper Monkey. And what Tamper Monkey does is it allows you to do exactly what you just saw, but automatically. So it allows you to create user scripts, is what they call them, the world's most popular user script manager. And anything you could do yourself manually, you can now automate. So we'll create a new script. And we will call this get rid of annoying kid. And we can see, so at the top, we have all these descriptions of it. So the name is what's going to be shown in, in our list of scripts. The match, that says what sites should this match for, and we want to match that specific site, so that's good. And then it's going to run this function, and you see it gives you a prompt, your code here. So I will do the remove. Now I have this script. I saved it with Control S. Now when I refresh, the kid is gone, and you can see we have this running script. And if I were to turn off the script, the kid would come back. Anyway, I spent a long time on this site uh, working on this challenge, and it was extremely annoying to see this kid troll me. It's kind of like Jurassic Park, where Nedry has that screen. He's like, uh-uh-uh, you didn't say the magic word. Yeah, please, God damn it. Okay. You didn't say the magic word. Please! Uh -huh. God damn it! Uh -huh. Hate this hack of crap. So that's, that's where we are. So a lot of this involves looking at the documentation of headers, and Mozilla Developer Network is one of the best places that you can find documentation on really anything web-related. Uh, so we're going to be using this quite a bit, and then we're going to go based off of prompts here, we are going to try to add headers. We can also use this dropdown. This dropdown is going to be nice. So one of the things that's kind of annoying about this challenge is you'll notice there are a few things that might fit the bill. And, and these are kind of loosey-goosey, these HTTP headers, which is a good thing on the one hand because developers of websites may not handle them properly because they're not really well-defined in terms of which one should be which. But we have from, for example, we have origin, and we have also refer. And all of those, to me, indicate something that would tell you where you're visiting from. I happen to test them, and I know refer is the right one based on testing, but yeah. Short of testing them all, there's no way you could have figured that out otherwise. So he doesn't trust users visiting from another site. So we'll use the refer value to say that we were referred by this site. Meaning, where'd we come from before to get here? Well, this site. Okay, so let's refresh again. And now it says, sorry, this site only worked in 2018. So let's see if we can find other values that seem useful uh, with regard to that. And as we scroll through, date looks interesting. Let's come back to that. Uh, I don't think date might be it. All right, so let's let's look up the format of date. Just searching the Mozilla documents here. All right, and we'll click through on date, and we can see an example here. So let's grab this example, and we'll change it to be 2018. And we'll submit again. I don't trust users who can be tracked. Okay. And we will search for track, tracking. That doesn't seem right. HTTP header for tracking. And we see do not track DNT indicates the user's preference. And it just seems to be a Boolean. Zero means allow tracking and one means Please do not track me. So let's try that. This website is only for people from Sweden. Uh, you might notice that I had a few browser tabs open when you came here, and there's a reason for that. Some of these were really hard to figure out, and so, you know, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm cheating. <laughs> I happen to look this up in advance and, and do this and now I'm just presenting my solution. So X forwarded four is the standard for identifying the originating IP address of a client connecting to a web server through an HTTP proxy or load balancer. Uh, so this is actually interesting. If you're ever blocked on the basis of say a region, like maybe Netflix doesn't allow some content or uh, YouTube doesn't allow some content from your country, 
you may be able to get around it just by changing the value of x forwarded for. And then it says only for people from Sweden, so we need to find a Swedish IP address. So I googled country IP addresses. And then I looked for Sweden. And I grabbed the first one that I saw. And let's try this guy out. Okay, now it says you're in Sweden, but you don't speak Swedish. And there was one other header that I found, which is accept language. And I was looking for a list of all the languages. And it was actually harder to find than I thought it would be, which is why I left the tab open. Here we have a, a list, and we're looking for Swedish, which has a subtag of SV. So let's try accept language. And don't feel bad if this challenge takes you forever. It took me a long time, and then I even had to look up some write-ups because uh, I didn't get all of these. Got most of them. All right, perfect. What can I say except you are welcome? And then Pico CTF, HTTP headers, very much cool, wow. All right, let's submit it. All right, cool. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please do all the nice YouTube things for me, like liking, subscribing, hitting the bell, commenting. Thanks a lot. Bye.